All right. I uh, had a little bit of a technology um, setback there, so I apologize for starting a little bit uh, um, later than we had planned. Um, uh, actually, I went halfway through the presentation, and then somebody told me we weren't live. So hopefully we are live now. Um, for those of you just joining us, I'm Joe Lucy, Certified Financial Planner, founder of Secured Retirement Financial here out of Minneapolis, where we help families around uh, the Twin Cities, Western Wisconsin, and actually in about 40 different states with their retirement planning. So I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. Um, unfortunately, the, the presentation today is one that's kind of preempting another presentation we had planned on. We had a lunch and learn that we do um, every third Wednesday that was going to be scheduled around Social Security. Uh, because of everything going on over the last couple of weeks in the market, we thought that actually focusing a little bit more on the coronavirus would be something that would be important to do. Um, we're learning a lot of different uh, terms here in the last couple of weeks that we may not have heard in the past. Uh, you know, things like FUCHI, the, uh, the, the National Institute of Health, uh, chair and, and social distancing and what have you. And uh, we wanted to spend some time talking a little bit about what this means for you and uh, your, more importantly, what it means for you and your retirement planning, the planning that we've uh, had the pleasure of helping so many of you with. Um, also, um, I want to, uh, I guess, point out that while we haven't been getting a lot of calls from you, our clients, um, we do know that that there's some nervousness out there. And we've been told that um, that these uh, communications like this are very helpful. Um, I know that many of you understand that your retirement planning and the plans we put in place are protected and, and um, that you're in a good spot, um, but it doesn't help. When the markets are up 2,000 one day, down 3,000 the next. Um, so I wanted to spend a little bit of time here today talking a little bit about uh, where where we're at, what do the markets think of this, and what can we be doing going forward? So um, that's what we're going to be kind of uh, going for. And, and I guess, as I said earlier, while you many of you understand that the planning we put in place has protected the retirements that you have, uh, we wanted to reach out to you anyway. So um, Johnny Carson here. I remember growing up and watching Johnny Carson. He was on TV every night, and oftentimes we'd see Johnny come – and uh, Karnak the Magnificent would come out where he would be able to guess and, 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 and uh, uh, foresee the future. Understand here that a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today is happening in real time. Um, we have to be fluid. I, I, we, uh, I, I'm not a medical doctor. I, I'm not an immuno. There, I don't even have any much. And uh, I probably failed the uh, A&P type uh, class in high school. But um, I do have a sister-in-law that's a nurse, so I guess that, that that doesn't give me any credit in this area. I don't know the disease management. I don't know this from that point. I'm going to be focusing more on your finances and your uh, retirement planning and what we want to focus on here today, if, if that's okay. So um, also understand that I have been doing this for over 25 years. Um, this isn't our first time going through a market correction, although it is interesting that it's been such a long time since we have. Uh, a lot of what brings us to today is the trading activity here, as you can see over the last 20 to 30 days and, and, uh, and, and where we're at. In fact, I had put this on top of the 2008-2009 market correction, and uh, we thought that this showed a little bit clearer picture of kind of where things are at. You can see that for the last... Uh, dozen years or so, things, well, we've had some, you know, dips in here of 10%. They really have not um, been as uh, uh, dramatic as what we've seen here over the last couple of weeks. So it makes sense that we uh, bring this together and talk a little about why the markets are acting the way that they are and what we can be doing next. So um, what's brought us here? Number one, um, we're, the markets are trading at three-year lows. The, the Fed is doing certain things. They've cut interest rates 1.5%, where it is near zero. Um, we're down 30%. Um, and a lot of what I hear is that this is because of these unprecedented times, unprecedented times, things that have never occurred in the past. And I would say that it's quite possible that, that 
all of the market corrections that I've experienced in my 25 years of doing this and even going farther back uh, to, to the Great Depression are because of some kind of unprecedented time. Uh, I remember the 2008 correction when we lost 50% uh, of the market value over a 16 month period of time. And that was due to some unprecedented times, a near collapse of the financial, um, uh, the financial solvency of our country. We had Merrill Lynch and Lehman Brothers, 100 year companies going out of business or being forced to sell off uh, due to the um, leveraging and such that was going on in Wall Street. I go back to 2000, 2001, um, uh, uh, airplanes um, going into the Trade Center and, and uh, the war on terrorism that uh, over a two year period of time, two and a half year period of time, uh, brought the markets down 50%. Those were unprecedented. Um, I go back to the very first market correction, um, a, a drop of over 20% that I experienced as a financial advisor. I've been doing this since 1994 and a couple years into it was the Asian financial crisis, which has uh, put um, uh, Japan into a situation for you know 20 years where uh, they've not really been able to produce like they had been, but it also brought down um, a, a group that had been uh, awarded a Nobel Peace Prize. Um, they'd been given a peace prize because they'd kind of solved the way to make sure that you had an absolute return type portfolio, one that was supposed to make money in every market. Um, and then they would use some leverage, some hedging to, to make sure that they could make money in all markets. And the financial crisis that went on in Asia there um, actually put this group that had won the peace prize, or not the peace prize, but the Nobel Prize in economics, uh, uh, put them out of business in a very short period of time. So um, while unprecedented, we also know that history tells us that these unprecedented times are often uh, shorter lived. They don't last forever. The bear markets um, precede bull markets. Uh, the average bull market lasts uh, 9.1 years and you see a cumulative return of almost 500%. And the other side of this is the bear markets last on average about one and a half years with a loss of about 41. Recent activity down 30%. You know, I don't know if we're at the end of this. I probably don't think we are. I'm not, I think we have to see a little bit more clarity. We know the markets like certainty and we don't have a lot of certainty out there. Um, but I, I guess I can't even say that we're in the beginning of the end, but I, I do believe that we are at the end of the beginning here with what's going on. And I think that um, looking at your portfolios, looking at how this plays into a solid financial plan, the income planning that we put together, the tax planning we put together, uh, the, the kind of planning we do here at Secure Retirement Financial uh, to make sure that you have um, a protected retirement. Um, these unprecedented times we're seeing right now are going to be um, in hindsight, short-lived and followed by another period of, of a bull market. So um, we had to talk about that. Here's what uh, has brought us here. 203,000 confirmed cases of the coronavirus, uh, the COVID-19. It's uh, brought upon 8,205 deaths. This is as of uh, 7.30 this morning, the latest update through the Johns Hopkins a uh, university, uh, uh, I don't know what we call this thing, the Johns Hopkins University map, I guess. Uh, they're reporting that they're doing. Uh, in the United States here, a little closer to home, we're at about 6,500, a little over that confirmed cases. And um, as of this morning was the first that we had surpassed uh, 100 deaths. So um, certainly something to get concerned about, certainly something that has put the markets on its heels and, and it has created this, this environment of a lot of um, ups and downs. Um, but I think compared to a lot of other diseases and things out there that we know are out there, um, the coronavirus may end up being something that falls a little short of some of the other things out there that AIDS, that will kill 2,100 people next year, pneumonia with 2,200, uh, hepatitis B, even as we've heard on uh, uh, media outlets, the seasonal flu, which kills 1,000 people a year. Um, we may, I'm sorry, 1,000 people a day. Um, this may, uh, looking back, 
be something that falls a little short on some of that. But of course, the reason for all the activity we have is that this is a new virus. This is something that uh, um, is we have not necessarily seen in the past. We the, the CDC isn't sure if this is something that'll uh, go away here in the spring and, and, and stay away, or is it something that's gonna happen uh, and reoccur in the fall and, and what have you. So because of this uncertainty is, is why uh, we've seen the markets react to have, the way they have. Um, we've seen the uh, government take some steps. We talked a little bit earlier about social distancing and the one chart that I came across that really brought this together for me, um, that made me understand why um, they're asking us to, to take these measures, why they're asking us to spend more time in our homes uh, to avoid large crowds, really goes back to a graph um, from 1918 during the Spanish flu. And then the darker line is the Philadelphia uh, area that had a 200,000 people came out and watched a parade. And the period of time shortly after that and the number of folks that got infected with the Spanish flu shortly after this 200,000 person gathering and the spike that, that put um, a lot of families into, uh, basically took away all the hospital beds and we saw 4,500 um, uh, people perished from that. That compared to St. Louis, who had uh, practiced some social distancing and it said we aren't going to have these large gatherings. And it took that same virus. And while there were still numerous people that got infected and it even lasted a little bit longer, they didn't have the uh, some of the same social problems that they're trying to have. Now, why am I bringing this up? I, I'm bringing this up because I think that the federal government here is really uh, not just the federal, the state of Minnesota here as well, has really kind of doing kind of some of the right things to do here. They are um, asking us to stay at home. They're asking us to take this serious so that we don't see some of these large spikes. And overall, I believe it's going to bring certainty back into the markets much sooner. Um, it hasn't, this isn't the only, the, the, the first uh, outbreak we've seen on these things too. In fact, um, We've seen a lot of these popping up from time to time, anywhere from SARS or the uh, the bird flu, the swine flu, uh, Ebola, it was a few years ago, measles popped back up, all of these different things. And uh, um, you can see here from this chart that while there were a lot of things that kind of uh, brought some uncertainty into the markets, all of these we have been able to put behind us. Um, the average return following um, uh, these type of outbreaks within six months has been about an 8% average return and going out a year later, it's been about a 13 month. So I'm very optimistic that as we, uh, because of the steps that have been taking, we are going to uh, get through this and we probably could very well get through this uh, sooner than later. Unlike some of these other type cyclical bear markets when the market comes down 20% or greater, these event driven uh, events like the, you know, these the, the diseases and such tend to be a little shorter in nature. The, the bear market tends to recover much quicker. And I believe that this too is going to be the situation we're looking at. So what do we do today? What do we do now? If we're in the middle of this, um, first of all, feel comfort in the planning we've put together for you. You know that we've created financial plans for our clients that are built on protecting the principal, making sure that families can take their money back, they can live the lifestyle they want in retirement, and that events like this, these pullbacks that we haven't seen in over a decade that uh, probably in hindsight, a lot of, um, well, many of us hoped would last much longer. Um, we, we might feel surprised again that we're running into this. We know that um, families or those of you that stay fully vested, that, that rely on the planning that's been put together in place, are going to come through this much better than somebody that tries to start timing the market. Um, now, this uh, chart here shows that um, on average, families that um, or investors that stay in the market through both the ups and downs have a 7.8% rate of return in their portfolios. Those that end up missing some of the 20 biggest up days uh, fare much worse. They in fact do uh, better than, or they get they capture less than 20% of the gains of those that stay in the markets. Um, 
one thing to kind of point out when we're seeing the up 2000, the down 2000s, the up 1000, down these 20 biggest days have historically always been right around the same time as these 20 bigger drop days. So something to keep in mind that staying fully vested is probably the right course of action, assuming that you have a plan in place like we've put together for those of you built on protection first, making sure that we have the income that you can maintain your lifestyle. We aren't going to be taking money out of accounts that have been depressed. The money we have in our market accounts are longer term money. They're for the wealth accumulation. We never forget that the wealth accumulation is um, one of the main goals for many families, but we don't want the wealth accumulation um, and sacrifice being able to create an income plan or, or have that income plan coming back tax efficiently. Um, so what's next? Oh, first of all, review your planning. Kind of sit back and, and kind of um, uh, uh, take an assessment of what's really important to us right now. I think that selling right now, um, if you do try to sell, you're going to have to be right twice. You're going to have to sell today, have the market drop again, and then have the ability, the stamina to jump back into the market at a lower value than it is today. The stock market itself tends to be a leading indicator. Um, what that means is that the markets will very likely bottom out prior to a point when the news around the um, coronavirus and the economy gets any better. We will probably see the markets bottom out um, while things are looking somewhat bleak. It may be uh, news announcements of double-digit uh, unemployment rates. It may be companies going out of business. There's certainly going to be some uh, additional fallout from the events that are going on here. Um, but go back and rely on the planning that's been done. Remember, we've always created these plans for you, our clients, a secure retirement financial based on the three criteria. We understand that the money you've set aside for your retirement has taken years to, to accumulate. The, our goal is to make sure that you never see that money dissipate on you um, that can't come back. Number two, we want to make sure that we have an income plan in place, one that can come back tax efficiently, one that allows you to live the lifestyle you've become accustomed to and not have concerns about running out of money. If you've uh, been working with us, you know that we've created plans around what we call mailbox income. It's money that is going to come into the checkbook each and every month, and I don't have to worry about market value adjustments like we're seeing right now. We've got plans in place that say this is where we're going to take your money from so that you know that this money that's invested in the markets can recover and do its job, which is ultimately to help create long-term wealth. Um, we want to protect the principal, get you the income you need, the mailbox income you need, uh, do so in a tax efficient way. And if we can, let's grow the wealth and that for the most part, that money that's being affected around the coronavirus is going to be that money that's been invested and should continue to be invested long term and allow this to recover. So a uh, couple things you might want to ask yourself. And um, this to me was, um, well, my wife, Patty, had brought it up to me, and I, I was a little concerned because there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we had recently just purchased a new office building. It was one of the big announcements we were going to have, but unfortunately, uh, coronavirus has taken away from that. But we're, we're purchasing a new office building we'll be planning on moving into here in the fall. Uh, we've added some additional key staff members here. Um, and I was home, and I was like, um, Patty, I'm, I'm concerned because... All of this stuff that's happening to me right now in the in the markets, the markets are down 30%. There's a uh, we're used to a very busy office. We're used to having the phones, uh, clients coming in, uh, potential clients walking through the door, and staying fully uh, um, with the conference rooms being busy. And 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 um, the ironic thing is, is that while there's a lot of market uncertainty, um, the phones have been fairly quiet here. Um, so. I'm talking to my wife, Patty. I'm saying, why is this happening? And she says, well, maybe it's happening for you. Maybe all of this is for you to take a breather. Um, we've eaten dinner as a family for three nights in a row, which is probably the first night we've done that since my son started playing sports at, at six years old. We uh, spent some time 
playing Monopoly the other night as a family and kind of just having some family time. I uh, uh, kind of was reintroduced to my wife. I, she's kind of a nice person. I, I, we hadn't spent as much time with each other recently as, um, as we probably should be. So it's been a great opportunity for us to kind of reconnect on, on a lot of different things. In fact, we went on a nice walk uh, the last weekend and, and we saw that with other families. Families are enjoying family time. They were on walks with other uh, with their children and, and, and such, and everybody seemed to be doing well. So with all of this going on, ask yourself, is this really happening to me or is it happening for me? Maybe it's a great opportunity to kind of come back and, and reassess um, what our long-term goals are. So the five takeaways from today's call, number one, relax. Um, Sit back, focus on the long-term goals, take the opportunity to uh, um, decide really what is this money for. If this money is for um, making sure that you're going to have the income you need in retirement and you would like to reduce taxes and yet still increase the wealth without sacrificing those first two, the planning in place that we've put together for you will help you do that. So relax, trust in the process. Um, also understand that... Um, we're a full service advisor. We're here for you. Don't hesitate to call. I, I said it a few moments ago. Our, our calls, our, our call volume has been surprisingly a little bit quiet. I, um, and, I, and I know that the reason why that is is because of the planning we've done. Um, we were in the conference room with a, uh, another client the other day that had some money at, at, at a, at a Vanguard and 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 when we called the the Vanguard number said that it would be a thirty minute hold. Well, forty five minutes later, they were still coming on saying it would be a thirty minute hold. I I uh, I know that 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 it's times like this that that um, that's why you've hired us. It's we so use us. Don't hesitate to call um, if you'd like to explore your plan. If you want to revisit it, if you want to see how this works together for you, please 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 don't hesitate to call. We've got time to do that. Um, we have taken measures like uh, um, many companies have about uh, doing some social distancing. Um, we are going to be reducing um, the staff to uh, to uh, uh, a capacity that, that's more of a skeleton crew, but we've had disaster plans in place. We already knew what we would do if this came to this someday. Uh, everybody in the office has access to everything they need to continue to work for you and service you and take care of the accounts and monitor the accounts and everything else that we have to do as a financial advisor. And all of that's going to continue to occur for you uh, without skipping a beat. So don't hesitate to call. We've got uh, uh, plenty of time on our hands to make sure that we are addressing things as we go through every, the uncertainty that we're seeing right now. Um, evaluate your portfolio strategies. Is now a time that you want to try to find uh, or maybe increase risk in your portfolios now that the accounts have come down? We've had a lot of families that for years have said we're somewhat hesitant to um, invest too aggressively in our accounts because we haven't seen a pullback. Well, here might be the opportunity. Take some of those accounts that have been more um, conservative. Uh, if it's money that's long term, and consider maybe even increasing that as long as it fits in with the overall planning that we put in place for you. Um, I think the biggest opportunity could very well be around tax planning. Personally, um, we, uh, uh, my wife and I had some IRA money sitting there and um, this was an opportunity for us to, to be a little bit more aggressive with moving some of that IRA money into something that's tax advantaged like a Roth IRA. We took advantage of that and, uh, I guess the timing looks like it could have been a week or two early. I think long term, we're going to look great. And I think that many of you that are looking at for strategies on how to reduce taxes long term, it's a great opportunity to do that. Um, also, uh, look at these low interest rates. While they aren't helping us if we want to invest in bonds, um, in fact, bonds may be something we want to talk about looking for bond alternatives in your portfolios with these low interest rates. The 10-year treasury, which was below a half a percent is now trading a little bit higher than that. It's back above one. But historically, these are very low rates. What does that mean for us? If you have a mortgage on your home and you have some time, maybe look at refinancing that. Uh, if you have some debt you have to pay off, consolidate. That might be a great time to be doing that. And if you have family members that have uh, student loans, it might be a good time to, to kind of look at that. Um, 
Overall though, um, we wanted to make sure that we took some time, let you know we're still here. Um, if you have questions or concerns, again, please don't hesitate to, to call. We've got contingency plans. We are gonna be, re, uh, many of the team members will be working remotely. Um, unless the police say that I can't come in here, I will probably continue to be in the office just about every day. Um, but we do have other members that are gonna be working very remotely. We have a couple numbers we wanted to make sure everybody had. First is our office number, 952-460-3260. Um, while we're going through this, one of the things that'll happen is that phone will ring to several of the team members' uh, phones. It's a ring, I don't know the technology behind it, but it rings on three or four cell phones at one time. Uh, they should be able to uh, at least uh, take a message, get you to the right person. Our commitment is to continue to be there and service you, and you should never have a situation where somebody's not answering our phones during normal office hours. Email is a good way to uh, reach out to us. It goes to uh, those same team members that will be managing those and, and passing them on to other team members. Our team is going to continue to work the 40 hours a week as we go through this, um, and, and we're here for you. Um, finally, the cell phone number is a it's an office cell phone, but I'm going to be personally carrying this cell phone with me. If you're not getting the service, if you're not, if you if you have questions, if something's keeping you up at night, don't hesitate to call me. That's why we um, are here for you. So, I uh, um, didn't want to take up too much time on this, but I think that if there are some uh, Q and A, let's see if there's anybody that's asked any questions. I'm uh, uh, just going through there. Uh, Looks like somebody had a hard time getting on. Hopefully Mark was able to do that. Um, we, we had some earbud issues. I don't sure, but it, um, um, looks like a few others. Any other questions? Otherwise, um, um, we will uh, uh, go ahead and conclude. I don't know if there's a way to uh, 